Hi, welcome to Fast Car. Today, we're asking, are engine oil additives actually any good? Do they do what they're supposed to do? Well, to find out, that's why I'm sat at Mobile Eco Tuning, sat on their lovely dyno with a Focus ST behind me. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a power run on the car before it's had an oil change, take it away, flush out the oil, replace it with some new liquid moly engine oil, add some Ceratec engine oil additive, and then bring it back and do another run on the dyno to see what difference it's made. So, let's get cracking. Right, so there you go, car's done its first dyno run. As you can see, it's made decent power, 260 odd horsepower, 440 newton meters of torque. So now what we're gonna do, we'll take it back to the workshop, drain the oil out, put the fresh stuff in, chuck in some additives, and we'll bring it back and see what difference it makes. So here we are back at the workshop, just been on the dyno. And now we're gonna start the work of flushing out the oil and replacing it with the new stuff and adding the additive. So the first thing we've got is some of Liquid Molly's motor clean. And we just put this in here, and then we run it up for sort of 10 minutes or so. And what that does is that will break down any deposits that are built up in the engine. And then when we drain the old oil, that will just flush all that out with it. So it gives it a nice clean base for the new stuff to go in. Now with the oil flush in there, we just uh, fire it up, let it run, let it idle for 10 minutes, let it work its way around the engine, clean all the stuff out, and then we'll just drain it out with the oil. Right, so that's the engine flushed. Now we're ready to top it up with fresh oil and we're using Liquid Molly Special Tech 530 because it's rated for this engine. Um, we'll put that in there, top it all up. Once that's done, we'll then put in the good stuff, Ceratec. This is a, an oil additive, it's a friction modifier. It helps with emissions, it can help actually imp improve fuel consumption as well. But as a byproduct of that, it might help increase power. And that's why we're gonna take it back to the dyno and see what difference this has actually made. Right, so there we go. All topped up, all levels are checked. Now, it's time to hit the dyno. Right, here we are, back at MET again. Car's on the dyno, as you can see. Already, we've only done a few miles already, it feels a little bit smoother, but now for the moment of truth. So on the dyno, I think it's all ready to go. So let's go. Well, the results are in and I have to say I'm amazed actually. It's made best part of 20 horsepower difference. And all we've done is change the oil and put some Ceratec in. It's not just the peak figures. If you look at the graph, the power is coming in so much earlier. Same with the torque. So grab David from MET and he's just gonna run through the graph of this just so we can have a little look at what, what's made the difference and why. We can't quite believe it. I've had to check data logs and everything just to make sure nothing else is going wrong. Yeah, he's gone through everything. Or, we've logged in a whole lot. Or, or anything. Yeah. It's unreal. So obviously the torque comes in so much earlier. Uh, what, what torque have we got? 488 newton meters versus 426 newton meters. 426, that's 60 newton meters. Yeah, difference. Uh, it holds it well as well. Uh, and this mid range, mid range, we got about 30 horsepower mid range. Yeah, you can see, can't you? Just yeah. So we got, what's that? 210 to 238. So yeah. just under 30 horsepower mid range. And we're bringing it in earlier. Um, yeah, you can see it's coming in a lot quicker. We're, we're hitting peak. Uh, four, what's that? Four, three, seven, five. 
Whereas before we were in peak at two, four, six. Yeah. So what's going on here though? We see it sort of starts to flatline. Obviously this bit starts to dip. So what, what's going on with that? So this is a Focus SD. All of them suffer with the actuators. Uh, we did a data log on it actually. So data log, that's three. Data log, that's two. Uh, you can see we make peak boost here, um, 220 kPa. Well, that's yeah. including atmospheric. Uh, and it drops off. It doesn't maintain boost. It drops right off to zero po um, 1.75. So it's making like 1.2 bar there and like 0 0.7. 0 0.75 there. Yeah. You can see the wastegate actuator here working flat out 93%. Um, so you can see that the wastegate's weak, which is why it's not yeah. stock, stock power. Um, we data logged it second time around as well after the oil change, and it's exactly the same. Yeah, you see exactly the same isn't it? boost figures. It's exactly the same. Drops off to 1.76. You can yeah. see the wastegate here. The reason for the crossover in the graph is the wastegate backed off a little bit here, but then it decided yeah, it was 81%, then back yeah. up to 94, 95, That's 96. It. Yeah. But the data logs are absolutely identical, boost wise and everything else. Um, it's crazy. Well. I'm absolutely amazed. I can't believe that. Genuinely, all we've done is change the oil, put some Ceratec in there, and I can't believe the difference it's made, especially when you consider Ceratec's main job is actually as a protector for the engine. It's a, it's a friction modifier that's supposed to increase the longevity of things. As a byproduct, those reduction in frictional losses clearly do something, and we're saying that this is now making about 20 horsepower more than it was this morning. And that ain't bad. <laughs>